Good evening, people of God. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ. It's my great joy to welcome you to Hope Lutheran Church this night where we gather as God's people, where we witness to our faith, and we sing praise to our Lord, and we gather to be fed by word, by sacrament, to be sent forth in ministry. Um, and the ministry we seek to be sought out in is to make Christ known. And we do that first by knowing Christ more deeply ourselves. That is our mission statement here. It's what we gather to do, and we're glad you're here to be a part of that. Um, if you're a newcomer in our midst, we want to offer a warm welcome to you. We're so excited that you're here, and we pray it's a meaningful time of worship, that you are transformed um, by the love of the people around you, by the love of Christ um, that is given to you, and also by the Holy Spirit that dwells within you. We look forward to getting to know you better. If you have any questions about who we are, what we believe, what we do, how you can be involved, what ministries we have for you to be involved with or to minister to you, please don't hesitate to ask. Anybody with a name tag will help you find the right kind of person to get connected with. And again, uh, don't hesitate to ask any questions you have. Also... When it comes to Holy Communion here at Hope, this is not Hope's table. It's also not a Lutheran table. This is the Lord's table of grace. If you commune wherever you worship normally, then you're welcome to come and commune here, and we're excited that you're here to be a part of that. Welcome. A few announcements for this week. First is a reminder that tickets for the 9th, October 19th picnic are now available. Um, there is no charge for those tickets, but you have to have one, so we make sure we have the right amount of food for everyone, so please keep that in mind. It's an easy way also to invite people to come and get to know your church a little better, to get to know your, your family here at Hope. So if you have neighbors or friends you'd like to invite or family from out of town you'd like to have come with you, that's wonderful. We'd love to have them here. Make sure you get tickets for them too um, so that we can make sure that we have enough for everyone. We also ask that each family prepares, and we know not everybody will, but we hope you will, everybody prepares an apple-centric dessert. How many of you like dessert? So if we had all 1,000 plus households bring an apple dessert, <laughs> it'll keep the doctors away for a long, long time. <laughs> dessert should be dropped off to the church kitchen in a covered container by 4 p.m. the day of the picnic. I can just imagine how many apple pies we're going to have. It's going to be crazy. Uh, additional reminder that our 14th annual Blessing of the Animals worship service is held on the day after that, October 20th. It's a Saturday morning. Uh, make sure to invite all your, the pet lovers in your life, neighbors, friends, people you see walking a dog in your neighborhood, tell them about that. It's a wonderful way for them to have a, a connection with others who love animals, to have a connection with the church, to hear God's blessings in their lives. This weekend at the next service, 6 p.m., we'll be welcoming 35 new members into the House of Hope. Um, they are to the, the Household of Hope. They will be received then. Um, they've been going to classes for a couple of weeks. They had a wonderful time. They've been a really fun group. Um, there's a lot of snarkiness in this group, so I loved it. It was wonderful, and we're excited about what they bring and also how we can be family together. So uh, please be sure that their information is not out this week. It'll be out the following week, and um, we're doing that now regularly. It gives us a chance to go over the bios a couple more times, make sure everything's clean, and there's not really a rush until the next week to get it to y'all, and it lets our staff not go quite as crazy when people show up last minute to join the church. So um, we want to make sure we move do that appropriately. Uh, when you see them, after you get your information, you see who they are, please make sure when you see them in your service, because several go to 4 o'clock, make sure that you get to know them a little better and welcome them to the church. Also, I uh, want to tell you about the doors. <clears throat> if you come in the far east doors where the ramp is, the one facing uh, Fairway Christian, um, please, when you come in, and, um, come in and out, please use the metal square. It looks like a handicap thing. You hit that, and it opens the doors automatically. They need to come back. The company has to come back and adjust those doors. If you use that, then the machine opens and closes it. Everything's great. But when you try to open it by hand, and it's a lot stiffer than it used to be, I mean, it gives you a workout. If you open it that way, it doesn't close itself all the way. It just doesn't have enough oomph to do that. So make sure you just hit that square. It'll open all the way. It'll close all the way. And it keeps the doors also from being left open where the air is all going out. Because if you didn't know this, air conditioning is kind of expensive, so we're trying to be careful with that. But it would really be helpful if you just push the square on the way in and out. Now, lastly... It is my great joy uh, to introduce to you all officially for the very first time, Pastor Ronnie. Pastor Ronnie, come on out. I just can't do it. We are so excited to, to have him here. We uh, had the vote a couple weeks ago. He was on the road the next day um, to get here, and has been working hard this last week. They get plugged and get things done. His family's here. Hi, guys. Samia and, and Peter in the back. 
Peter will be starting school here on Monday, so be praying for him as he gets uh, plugged in there, and they're still decorated in cardboard probably right now. But uh, it's good to have you, and you have some words for us. Yeah, so I just want to take a moment to say thank you so much. I want to thank uh, Pastor John Mark and Mary Jo and the family for their uh, hospitality to us. I want to thank the uh, uh, call committee and the council for their leadership and ministry in this church. I want to thank each and every one of you uh, for welcoming us when we had come at the meet and greet. So thank you so much for making us feel at home. It truly does feel like home, uh, away from home. And this is the new home. But together, when we worship and fellowship, this is where home is. So thank you so much for that. Amen. And he'll be bringing the word to us in just a few minutes. Would you stand where you are and greet each other in the love and peace of Christ? bring a new understanding of God, that God so loves the world. We are called to bring a new hope in God, that God gives us new life. We are called to follow the commandments and the law. The law of God is to love God and to love one another. Come, let us love one another with the love of God. Let us join together in our love of God to worship and follow Jesus.
seated as we continue in worship. Hallelujah.
Let us pray. Almighty God, in a world that is so often obviously filled with darkness, in a time we find ourselves in shadow and loss and and bereavement and concern, Lord, in illness and in fear, we pray that your light would shine. That would not only shine into our lives to illumine us, to, to take away those shadows that hold us down, but it would shine in us and through us into the world. Lord, you reign in our hearts. We are your kingdom made real on this earth. And Lord, we pray that we would go out into all the world to make disciples that they too might know the joy of your salvation. Speak to us this night through your word. Lord, give us a burning desire, a zeal that burns in our bones to go out and share the good news of Christ, to know what it is to be saved and loved by a great God who gave all for us and who sends us for the sake of the world. We ask this in the name of Christ, our Lord and our Redeemer. Amen. to 
reading today is from Exodus chapter 14. When the king of Egypt was told that the people had fled, Pharaoh and his officials changed their minds about them and said, What have we done? We have let the Israelites go and have lost their services. So he had his chariot made ready and took his army with him. He took 600 of the best chariots along with the other chariots of Egypt with officers over all of them. As Pharaoh approached chariots along with the other of the chariots of Egypt with officers all over them, and as Pharaoh approached, the Israelites looked up and there were the Egyptians. They were marching after them. They were terrified and cried out to the Lord. They said to Moses, was it because there were no graves in Egypt that you have brought us to the desert to die? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Didn't we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone, let us serve the Egyptians? Now, it would have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Moses answered the people, Do not be afraid. Stand firm, and you will see the deliverance the Lord will bring you today. The Egyptians, you see today, you will never see again. The Lord will fight your fight. You need only to be still. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And all that night, the Lord drove the sea back with a strong east wind and turned turned it into a dry land. The waters were divided. And the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water. On the waters, the waters were divided. Then the the right and on the left, the Egyptians, they pursued them and all Pharaoh's horses and chariots and horsemen followed them into the sea. During the last watch of the night, the Lord looked down from the pillar of fire and the cloud at the Egyptian army and threw it into confusion. He jammed the wheels of their chariots so they had difficulty driving. And the Egyptians said, let's get away from the Israelites. The Lord is fighting for them against Egypt. Then the Lord said to Moses, Stretch out your hand over the sea so that the waters may flow back over the Egyptians and their chariots and horsemen. Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and at daybreak the sea went back to its place. The Egyptians were fleeing toward it, and the Lord swept them into the sea. The water flowed back and covered the chariots and the horsemen. The entire army of Pharaoh that had followed the Israelites into the sea, not one of them survived. But the Israelites went through the sea on dry ground with a wall of water on their right and on their left. And when the Israelites saw the mighty hand of the Lord displayed against the Egyptians, the people feared the Lord and put their trust in him and in Moses, his servant. The word of the Lord. So today, I was going to go up on the pulpit and preach, but I'm afraid of heights. That's why every time I stand up, I get dizzy. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. One Sunday afternoon after church, a little girl comes to her mom and says, look, I heard today that they were saying that God is so big. Is that true? And her mom said, of course that's true. And then the girl said, well, wait, I also heard them saying that God lives in our hearts. Is that true? And the mom said, that's true. Then the girl said, well, if God is so big and God lives in our hearts, how come God does not show? How come God does not show. See, can we claim the Lord of the universe, God, the creator of the heavens and the earth, as our Father? Call him Father, who art in heaven, and yet feel abandoned like abandoned orphans. Is it possible that we are baptized in the Spirit, the same Spirit that have led the first church at Pentecost, 
to speak in every language and every tongue and share it to the whole nations. We have that same spirit. And yet be silent about our faith or not share it with the next door neighbor. Is it possible to claim the Lord Jesus, the one who calmed the winds with just one word, the one who brought down the storms, the one who could only say, and it will be done, and yet feel terrified by any breeze that comes our way? Is it possible to say that this Jesus, the bread of life, the one who fills every hunger, and claim him as the one that we follow, and yet feel unsatisfied, and feel like we have no meaning and purpose? Is it possible to say that this Jesus, the one who had healed the sick, the one who had given sight to the blind, the one who made the deaf hear, the mute speak, the one who made the lame stand and walk, and say that he is my Lord and my Jesus, and yet give up to the challenges of illnesses and struggles as challenging and hard that they can be? Is it possible for us to say that this is the God who is the way, the truth, and the life. The one we claim him to be, the truth, the way, and the life, and yet feel confused, not knowing where to go, not knowing what is right, what is wrong, and wondering and questioning every day. Is it possible to claim Jesus as the Savior, the one who forgives all the sins, not just some, but all of our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness, and yet keep holding on to the mistakes of the past, the little ones that we've done, and hold them, even the ones who have done something against us, not forget and not forgive. If God is so big and God lives in us, how come God does not show? There is a verse that I think can help us in this dilemma a little bit. So if we say that we have this God and we have this power and we have this might, then sometimes we feel like we're too weak and we just can't carry on in life. But I feel the key to this dilemma is this verse. I, Paul says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Say that with me and try it. I can do all things who cry through Christ who strengthens me. All right, now you can say it as if you mean it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now say it as if you want the neighbors to hear it. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So look, if I can do all things through Christ, it's not my power, it's not my might, but it is Christ who dwells in me. And to connect that, then it is what? Faith right? What connects the possible with the impossible, what connects the visible with the invisible, what connects the world that is seen and the world that is unseen is what we refer to as faith. Now, Hebrews 11 says that faith is the assurance of things not seen, the evidence of the things hoped for. That's faith. And faith, by the way, is a gift. It is not of our own doing. It says that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So if it is, then it's not our own achievement. It is not our own accomplishments because so often we may feel that, you know what? Things are not happening because I don't have that faith. Because I'm weak in my faith. When I was a little kid and I grew up on a little hill in Jerusalem, actually the hill would oversee the whole place of Jerusalem. And I love that verse that said, when Jesus said, if you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can move mountains. So when I was a little kid, I had a task. I would sit and stare down the mountain across from me and say like, okay, is it going to move? And then I'd come back the week after and stare it down and say, is it going to move? And then I would question and say, wait a second, the mountain is not moving. So is it that my faith is not even as small as a mustard seed? Are you kidding me? with all the prayers, with all the worship, with all the praise, with this beautiful band, beautiful place that will lift up God, and you're telling me we don't have faith as small as a mustard seed? That we can't move mountains? Well, here's the thing. I believe it's not just faith. But it is faith in the faithfulness of God. It is faith 
in the faithfulness of God. See, it was the faithfulness of God that had led the Israelites. We heard this story this morning, or this afternoon, I should say. We heard this uh, from Exodus, where it says that it was the faithfulness of God that had delivered the Israelites. It was the faithfulness of God that had led Moses to lead the Israelites. It wasn't the Israelites. I mean, they were clueless. They were faithless because they kept complaining and murmuring and saying, God, what have you done to us? And no matter what you've done to them, they always would complain. But it was the faithfulness of God that despite their faithless attitude towards him, he would rescue them. He told them, just stay still, wait there, and watch the deliverance of the Lord today. Just watch. Don't do anything. I am going to deliver you. The faithfulness of God. It was the faithfulness of God that had given a second chance to Adam and Eve when they had disobeyed God and fell out of the garden. It was the faithfulness of God that had saved the world after their disobedience through the flood and saved Noah and his family. It was the faithfulness of God that had led somebody like Jonah, who had gone out and even disobeyed God and was swallowed by the whale, a tuna fish all week long, well, at least for those three days. But it was the faithfulness of God that would get Jonah out and give him even a second chance. It was the faithfulness of God that would give David, David, I can't believe that we actually have a whole book called the book of Psalms by David, the one who committed adultery, the one who committed a murder, right? You think our sins are great. It's good to read his Psalms. But God is the one who had given David a second chance. God is the one that had given David the place for us to come and say, we believe in the words and the prayers that David had to inspire us. It was the faithfulness of God that had given the place for someone like Abraham to find his way because he kept looking and looking. He didn't know where he was going. It felt like God called him to the promised village, but he was just going in circles and circles and circles. And then God would lead him to the right place. It was the faithfulness of God that had sent us a Savior. As a matter of fact, the gospel for today is the one from Matthew and chapter 2, which we'll read later on at the 6 o'clock service. But if you look at that gospel, it said how God had led Joseph and Mary to protect the baby, the infant Jesus, to go to Egypt. So he says, I have called my infant, I have called my son from Egypt. It was the faithfulness of God that had led Joseph and Mary to escape the danger. Yes, it is faith in the faithfulness of God. Because now it is no longer about me. I don't have to feel bad. I don't have to beat myself up and saying, what am I doing wrong? Why is it that I can't get this mountain moving? Why is it that I can get the burden off my shoulder? Why is it that I can't rise up? But I want to tell you today, because of that verse that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Try it with me. I can do all things who Christ who strengthens me. Because I say that, I believe that. I say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The one who gives me power. The one who gives me energy. The one who gives me a reason and a purpose. The one who fills and fulfills my life. The one who continues to encourage me so that I can share the love of God with everyone that I see in every place that I go. It is the faithfulness of God that had led us to this place and that had given us hope in the villages, but hope in our hearts, hope in our lives, hope in moments of despair, hope that we can share with everyone outside the boundaries of this building. The faithfulness of God means that He is calling us to use the strength, not ours. God never asks for, it was a quote that's been said, God never asks for your ability God only asks for your availability. God is saying, are you available? Let me do the work. Just be present and present yourself to God. And God will continue to lead you through this place. God will continue to lead you through this fellowship. God will continue to lead you through the body of Christ so that we can continue to be the vessel of God in the world, an evangelical tool to witness to proclaim the gospel, to speak of God's glory, and to continue to say, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, your mercies are new. God, our God, is an awesome God. I say always, God is not good. 
God is not great. God is awesome. Good is just low way, small way to describe. Our God is an awesome God. And this God is the one who is with us today. This is the God that we worship. This is the God whom we praise. We give today our Lord Jesus all the praise, all the honor and glory now and forever. Amen. rise for prayer. As we remember the story of God's gracious presence with us through life and through death, we lift our prayers today on behalf of all creation. O God of Moses, you have led your people by fire in the stars. You guided our ancestors through the wilderness. And as we hear your voice and move forward through the waters unknown to us, help us. We are sometimes so overwhelmed by the journey and what is going on in the world and are so afraid of living in uncertainty. Let us be available to you so that you can work through us and help us see your way. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious God, as we join with our families and loved ones and faith communities, remind us of all the people in this world who call on you and don't seem to hear. Help us to speak for you to them. We pray for those who are hurting, those who cry out for healing, and for hope. We pray for those who have asked for our prayers. And you know our needs, O Lord. So we pause now to offer the prayers we carry within us to you. Lord, in your mercy. 
Gracious God, with heartfelt thanks, we come before you thanking you for the ministry of Pastor Ronnie and his family that you have brought into our midst. Guide them, be with them. Let them feel our love. Let them know our hope. Be with all who are your servants in this world at this time and in this place and everywhere else. Lord, in your mercy. And now as we come to your table of grace to receive your presence, O God, guide us and direct us to know that you have called us. And hear us now as we offer our table prayer, a prayer that you taught us to pray. disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Then again, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it for all to drink saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. Remembering, therefore, Jesus' life and ministry, his call for us to follow, his death and resurrection, we lift this bread and cup before you, O God, giving thanks that you have made us your servant people. And we ask that you send your spirit upon these gifts of your church to gather into one all who share in this sacrament. This is the Lord's Supper. Our Lord is the host, and our Lord invites all his people to join him at the table. You may be seated and follow the direction of the usher.
gracious God, as you care for, nourish, and feed your children, bless those who bring this sacrament to our homebound family members, and bless those who receive this bread of life with your presence and peace. Amen. Let us arise. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.